Welcome back everybody. Special spotlight edition again. Skanking it in a UK style. So in love. Tell it. Group called Brown Sugar. I'm in love with the dreadlocks. Effortlessly blending the world of roots and culture with the references to dreadlocks and the emerging lover's rock subgenre in Britain. Lover's rock, a subgenre, a new style of reggae created in Britain in the mid 1970s, continued through various permutations through the 80s and 90s, right up to today. Still an influence on reggae today, both uh, UK artists and uh, artists from Jamaica conceived and created in Britain. Some have suggested it's the first truly British form of reggae and one that uh, maybe more closely reflected the hopes, aspirations, and experiences and influences of young black Britons of West Indian descent, especially females, uh, who were as tuned into the sounds of Motown, Philadelphia International, as any of the roots and culture uh, sounds coming from Jamaica or at home. Which, uh, which was uh, definitely predominant in that time, the Roots and Culture, Rastafari. Uh, Lover's Rock was created by two men, one Lloyd Coxon, aka Sir Coxon, real name Lloyd Blackwood, was a uh, well-connected sound man in the UK scene who uh, noticed there was a distinct lack of opportunity for female singers. Uh, the, he noticed that uh, a large proportion of record buyers were women who were not being well served at all by the material that was coming through at that time, which tended to be either uh, love songs from Jamaica, love songs have always been part of reggae, first off. Uh, just uh, lover's rock is a term kind of specific to the UK and uh, as it's come to be known. But uh, also they were, uh, they were not being well served by opportunities to record, tended to be, reggae tended to be heavily male dominated at this time. Uh, he was also a producer, was frustrated with working with uh, male singers who, uh, who he claimed would be arrogant, difficult to work with. Uh, he'd found the female singers were more professional, uh, could get the job done better. So he had a DJ residency at a club called the Four Aces in Dalston, London, very famous club. Uh, there they would have talent nights where he would spin dub plates and uh, aspiring singers would come up and sing over top of them. One young singer consistently trumped all the others. Her name was Louisa Marks and he got the idea to take her into the studio to fill this niche that he perceived was missing in the UK reggae market for females, that huge chunk of rec the record buying public. As he claimed, uh, the uh, the men might be might be coming to your dances, uh, listening to you spin the tunes, but uh, when you went round their house, they weren't they didn't own your records, but the females would. So he uh, he very cannily noticed that there was that opportunity to be exploited. Took Louisa Marks into the studio with the group Matumbi laying down the music, led by Dennis Bovell, the great uh, guitar player band leader of Matumbi, a great innovator and a kind of co-creator of the lover's rock genre. The result was Caught You in a Lie by Louisa Marks, cover of an old soul tune, which appeared on Lloyd Coxon's Safari label and was a massive hit in the UK. Lover's Rock then exploded, would uh, never be terribly visible to the outside, uh, the outside world. In 1979, singer Janet Kay had a huge hit with Silly Games, which reached number two on the British pop charts. Other than that, Lover's Rock, uh, vir virtually invisible to uh, the outside society, except for the, uh, the Jamaican and West Indian populations in the urban centers who were tuned into these sounds that better reflected their their goals, their lives, than perhaps that which was coming from Yard or Jamaica. Louisa Marx would later move to Clem Boucher's, Boucher's label and have further hits in the Lover's Rock genre, 
with 6 6th Street, 12 inch single here, original, uh, heavily uh, marked up with pen. Clem Boucher's label. And another one I have, even though you're gone, you can see the label a bit better on this one. Clem Boucher's Boucher's label. Hopefully you can see that. Dennis Brown's label was soon to uh, soon to exploit the Nascent Lovers Rock subgenre shortly after its inception with a group called 15, 16, 17, who were a trio of teenage girl singers, the name referred to their ages, who hit with a song called, song called Emotion. 15, 16, 17, this is actually an original on Dennis Brown's DEB music label, a label he'd formed with Castro Brown in the UK for uh, productions and releases. Great title on the B side, Castro Brown speaks to Dennis Bovell. Dennis Bovell, kind of co-creator of the lover's rock genre, heavily involved in much of its creation. Um, lover's rock would tend to be looked down on by some, not being authentic enough, never, uh, never minding that uh, the rhythms, the actual music, was being played by the, the cream of the crop of UK players who could then turn out, uh, turn out uh, hard roots just as easily as they could, the softer more easygoing lover's rock sounds. The lover's rock was made for, uh, for for playing in a dance. Both Lloyd Coxon and Dennis Bovell were heavily tuned into the UK sound system scene. They knew what crowds wanted to hear at the dances, what uh, particularly what the ladies wanted to hear, something to dance to, to feel good to on a night out, not necessarily this hard in your face roots and culture reggae. DEB Music would also put out the album by 15, 16, 17, Magic Touch, which contained further hits in Black Skin Boys and Girls Imagination from the DEB Music label. 15, 16, 17, Castro Brown, partner of Dennis Brown. No relation as far as I know. DEB Music also put out another Lover's Rock single in This Love by a group called Me and You. I believe they were male-female duo. They also have an LP, which I do not have. But the Lover's Rock genre was finally uh, given a name by the group called Brown Sugar, who were put together basically uh, by the producers as separate auditions and paired up as a trio of them. Carol... Wheeler would later continue as the Lover's Rock singer Kofi, K-O-F-I, would continue through the 80s and 90s, probably still active today as far as I know. And uh, Karen Wheeler would later find fame with Soul to Soul later on in the late 1980s, Jazzy B's Soul to Soul. But got their start in Brown Sugar and both, they would, uh, particularly Karen, Whe Karen uh, Wheeler, I think I've got that name right, Carol Sims, there's two Carols. Carol Sims, I believe was her name, would uh, continue redoing some of the early brown sugar sides. And their releases would appear on the label called Lover's Rock. There's one of the 45 labels there. I don't own any myself. Lover's Rock, uh, very scarce to see here. This is just an introduction to the roots of it only. I have very little of it. Uh, here on the west coast of Canada, extremely unusual to see any Lover's Rock turn up. But uh, Brown Sugar particularly merged the uh, romantic sensibilities of uh, the sentimental sense of Lover's Rock with buoyant rhythms made for sound system play, for dubs, and um, also brought in a sense of black pride and uh, conscious lyrics. So perfect synthesis of the two as summed up in that title, I'm in love with the dreadlocks. Further songs like uh, Dreaming of Zion, Black Pride, our reggae music, all kind of effortlessly bridging the two worlds. Further superstar of the lover's rock genre was Carol Thompson, sometimes called the queen of lover's rock. Her debut, Hopelessly in Love, shot on the streets in Harleston, UK. Here's actually the uh, location as recreated for the reggae covers book. 
the street of Harleston, UK. She said, the fur coat belonged to the wife of the boss of the record company. I didn't like it and felt very self-conscious wearing it. Being told to look sexy in the back street of Harleston with people staring at me from, my win from their windows, I was too shy to say anything. Amazing, it's now an iconic picture. And an iconic reggae cover contained hits of hers like I'm Sorry, the title track, I nearly played Sing Me a Love Song as the title of this video, unfortunately, is blocked. I'm going to show the few Lovers Rock original singles I have, besides that uh, 15, 16, 17 one. Many years ago, I walked into one of the local record shops and found these on the uh, front counter, priced very cheap, some as little as 90 cents, 99 cents, sorry, $1.99, very cheap. I don't know if they'd go for more now or not, but... Uh, Carol Thompson's Hopelessly Without You was there. And I picked these up. Just very, very unusual to find these at home. These kind of UK labels, SG labels. Many of these obviously belong to the same former owner, ME. One of Carol Thompson's big hits. As well as this one. This one's a little more expensive. Costs five bucks. And uh, these also were owned by... Uh, Try and cover up the address there. Mel Warner, he's a well-known local radio DJ and show promoter. Promoter uh, Definitely didn't listen to his radio show too often. He had a long-running show on local community radio. He tended to play more soca and uh, other styles of Caribbean music than reggae, but I guess it's kind of cool to own some of his records. Yellow Vinyl there, Carol Thompson with I'm So Sorry. Produced by Leonard Santic Chin, Jamaican producer who moved to the UK and began working in the lover's rock genre. Another one on yellow vinyl, again from the same former owner, M.E. or Merlene, I guess her name is, on the Empire label. Produced by Winston Curtis, another uh, singer, I guess this is maybe his own label. Definitely produced it, Winston Curtis. This is 1980, Samantha Rose with Kiss You All Over. And a further one with her, with the cover of the Heptones Book of Rules on the Empire label, Ray Mondo and Samantha Rose. Uh, visiting Jamaican stars, uh, some of them that were used to love material already would, uh, would translate well to the lover's rock sound of the UK. Got this one uh, at the same time, at the same haul, on the nice Moa Ambassa sleeve from the UK. Again, M.E., former owner, and uh, Mel Warner stamp on the label. Hey Baby by Pat Kelly for Larry Lawrence's ethnic label. And another one on the ethnic label. Another one by Pat Kelly, You Get To Me. Lover's Rock would continue as a genre through the 1980s, uh, undergoing various permutations. Uh, wasn't just female singers, although it kind of started out very female-centric. Uh, later singers would be uh, Janet Kay, as I said, would have a huge hit in 1979 with, with um, Silly Games. Don't have that one, I don't think. Uh, there were also singers like uh, Barry Boom, um, Peter Hunnigale, for one. Had a long-running career in the UK, Lover's Rock. Winston Reedy, I do have an LP by him around from the UK. Kind of a blend of Roots and Lover's Rock themes. But uh, Lover's Rock, definitely a huge influence. You could say reggae star Maxi Priest definitely came out of the UK Lover's Rock scene, as did uh, Biddy McLean, very well, all very well versed in that sound, that, uh, that genre's genre's uh, influences, as uh, of course is Holly Cook. It's been very uh, well received in recent years. Definitely well versed in that lover's rock sound, bringing it up to date to today with kind of that classic sensibility. Uh, there's also a great compilation that appeared on Soul Jazz Records a couple of years ago. Harmony, Melody and Style. Just a various artists compilation of UK lover's rock with tunes like Gene, by Gene Adabambo, Trevor Hartley, male lovers rock singer, uh, Louisa Mark on there, Candy McKenzie, and on volume two, or volume one here, that was volume two, four LP set, 
you have Sandra Reed, Carol Thompson again, Winston Curtis, Kofi updating Black Pride from Brown Sugar, her Brown Sugar days. Lovers Rock, Sound of Young Black Britain, especially female Britons. Still a genre kind of continuing today. I don't know if it's still necessarily called that, but definitely those vibes are around. Was carried uh, through the 1980s into the 1990s by labels like Fashion Records, by uh, Neil Fraser, aka Mad Professor, and uh, Dennis Bovell himself, still continuing in the genre for many years, and uh, many others, of course. Uh, as I said, don't have much of that in my collection, but I definitely wanted to give you a brief look at the origins. So hope you've enjoyed, guys. Cheers.